Any card you scan creates a record the government can access. Unless you use cash, they know you got what you did. And before you accuse me of promoting conspiracies, certain agencies do monitor the sales of certain products. Certain purchases of uncommon products or excess purchases of certain common ones set off the proverbial red flags and depending on what, you can be paid a visit or even get raided. The government may even mandate all or certain sugary products require an ID to buy. If you're old enough to recall back some of the items you used to be able to buy but now require an ID to get, think. For goodness sakes, remember a few years ago when Target an Obama supporter both terms, was scanning driver's licenses for age-restricted items like tobacco products? No legitimate reason was given. Why? At all. Since a Target spokesperson said those without ID can just give their birth date, like any other store. Did you mash a finger on a touchpad screen? Well, there's a fingerprint record, as well as a video from multiple angles, and a record of where and when you were. Don't forget the customer rewards cards, too. After all, you filled out personal information on an application which was entered into a computer. Okay, let's say you pay cash, didn't have to scan an ID, and you ignored the cameras. You got home. Is it safe now? Has it been the perfect crime, as Bart Simpson put it? Right now, some companies are using RFID tags in product packaging. And not solely for anti-theft purposes either, as one company, at least one company has stated. Uh, for goodness sakes, the Mythbusters said they tried to do a special on it, but the RFID companies came down on them so hard that they had to not do it. RFID, radio frequency identification chips, in products could tell on you. With products like refrigerators and washing machines having the ability to connect online and report usage and maintenance issues, as well as upgrades, why couldn't slash wouldn't one roll out that could read RFID chips and report the contents of your fridge to the government? Maybe it shows you've got a lot of forbidden products in your freezer, like tubs of ice cream, and shuts it off on a day your utility usage indicates you to be at work, melting and spoiling the goodies. Keep in mind while dismissing these theories that we're talking about a government that now has an internet kill switch and was sneaking in fake employees into Google server rooms to s secretly install back doors and God only knows what else. And if you think it was only Google they did it to, you're epically kidding yourself. Don't forget what they did to Cheryl Atkinson. Let's take another step and reasonably say you got an older fridge with no smart technology, uh, aka stupid technology, and no internet cable. What about the rest of your house? How about all those smartphones, Sony TVs, certain kids' toys, and other products that are always on and listening? Remember a decade ago when news broke the government could turn on the microphone in your cell phone, even when turned off, to eavesdrop on you? Also, the camera? It was so bad that I remember a news story that had video of George Bush visiting troops to speak to them. Not only did they have to take the battery from their cell phones out, but the phones and batteries were put in separate sacks and removed from the room. Apparently, taking the battery out of your cell phone does not stop it from being used to spy on you, and apparently persons unknown are inside the U.S. and can do it, because Bush certainly wasn't worried about the CIA or other organization in the government spying on him. Some of you may have heard, while well, I'm sure most of you have not, that the video camera on your iPhone can be activated by hackers and that they can take pictures and video of people and share it with each other at certain websites. Why? Because people are stupid enough to leave their phones standing on their chargers pointing at their beds so hackers can not only see you naked in bed but masturbate and having sex. And they share that with each other online. Oh, you better believe it. So if hackers can do that, why couldn't a government bent on finding fat offenders? Before you say no, remember Brandon Robb, R-A-U-B. If you don't know his story, you must take the time to research it. Then you're forced to hide from all the technological devices. Never mind, the CIA said a couple of years ago or so it wanted to put cameras and TV sets so it could see what you were doing. Those bags of chips, candy wrappers, soda cans, opening, all have unique sounds which tell on you to any device with a microphone and Wi-Fi. 
Wi-Fi Barbie, for example. Like Michelle said, Barack isn't going to allow you to go back to the way you were. They're not going to just lay a finger on your butterfinger. They're going to ban it. Hostess may have survived the labor union, but it won't survive Fedzilla's de facto compliance regulations on food. In fact, a lot of them won't. They'll either have to spend tons on R&D to make their products meet certain guidelines, or be taxed out of existence. That is, of course, until the full weight of the visible foot comes down on them and just outlaws goodies altogether. We won't be allowed to decide it. It'll be another voluminous bill that will create positions where somebody in charge will appoint ones who decide. I think we're fairly intelligent people. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. Well, that is, until they ban gum. Let's say you find a way around all the ways they could find out, and you enjoy that bag of chips, that pizza, those candies. Guess what, big boy? Eventually, you'll have to see a doctor for a medical problem, if not a fitness exam for a job, and then you gotta weigh in, and the doctors are now required by law to submit that information to the Fedzilla. You can't hide forever, especially if you're fat. By hook or by crook, they will get you. Might as well get your number six button now. But what if you're like tons of people each year who put on and off weight, in other words, human? If you're a repeat offender, and you disobey the government, can they block your card from purchasing an item they deem restricted because you met your quota? They already deny and approve certain food items with EBT, aka food stamps. If the IRS can revoke your driver's license for failure to pay a certain amount of taxes and the government can take your land under imminent domain, couldn't they do this? Where does an authoritarian utopist ever draw a line in regards to the limits of his or her power? But before we're even there, Michelle Obama has already started ruining our kids' school lunches. They're given these ungodly small portions and forced to take a bunch of healthy stuff they don't want reporting they're starving because of the utopian in training. People in prison and at Club Gitmo get fed better than this. The kids take the stuff they don't want and, once at a trash can, junk it. Somebody should tell Michelle there are starving kids in China. And Kendra. It's amazing, while at the same time we are supposed to have problems with food deserts, we're also suffering from rampant fatness. I guess it's supposed to be like Gilligan's Island or Lost, where the fat guys seem to never suffer from a lack of food. But nobody wants these guidelines from her, including herself and hubby. After all, if they and the committee guidelines were so great, she and her husband would follow them. Yet time and time again, we've seen and read about them doing the exact opposite. At one point, their hypocrisy was getting so much attention that at one event being held, they ended up having the menu kept unreleased to the public. They weren't keeping fruits and vegetables secret after all. If school kids wanted it, they wouldn't trash it and be complaining about lack of good stuff were present. And it doesn't look like Michelle is getting any thinner, if you know what I mean. They're intentionally creating those food deserts whereby everything we want to eat, or even need to, especially in bigger portions, is regulated out of your hands leaving us with a desert of barely any real food. Well, you know what my favorite food pyramid is? One made of spun nut donuts. Once upon a time, funny comedian Chris Rock joked that if you got caught smoking crack at McDonald's, you can't keep your job, because they won't trust you around the Happy Meals. It was, of course, a joke about Mary and Barry. Liberals don't want to trust any of you around Happy Meals. If they had their way, Happy Meals would be taxed heavily like vices such as smoking, or even regulated out of existence. Life is short. For some, even more so. Pleasures are far and few. Whatever joy we can get out of it, even if it's just sitting there and consuming a container of Blue Bell chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, is welcomed. Sure, much of it is unnecessary. Sure, many people may gorge themselves slovenly. But it's our choice. Right or wrong, it's nobody's goddamn business but our own. Sure, being fat is about as fun as shitting your pants in Walmart with a bathroom nowhere in sight, but I take it over an oppressive, busybody nanny government and new laws and regulations any day. I'd rather be a fat bastard than a serf. 
I'm reminded of a news story from a person who received a letter from their electricity provider a few years ago telling them they were using more electricity than their neighbor uses. Undoubtedly, something similar will occur early on when the Fedzilla attempts to de facto compliance you into shape, sending you a letter or email informing you your neighbor doesn't consume as many caramel moon pies as you do, replete with a friendly reminder of fines slash taxes. If such a thing occurs, might I suggest forwarding the letter to Sheila Jackson Lee? Someone needs to tell her it's okay to stop eating in between dumbass herring views on the Senate floor. Or whichever floor she stands on. I mean, whenever she's not speaking, she's obviously eating. I mean, my God, just look at her. When the time comes, I suggest we do one of those mail campaigns. Only this time, we'll bombard them with candy. Regular Tootsie Rolls should do. A.K.A. the candy that nobody ever eats and is always left on the bottom of the candy dishes or Halloween bags. We have to save sugary snack foods. If not, for our own personal enjoyment for future movie viewers. Otherwise, that scene in Ghostbusters won't make sense at all. Forget the whales. Save the cowtails.